Hey guys, this is Dr. Janvi. Welcome back to the series of uh, case-based scenario. In this video, we are going to see about gunning splints from the subject oral surgery. So, anybody have any idea about what gunning splints are? So, let's see that. So, a gunning splint. So, as you can see, appreciate in this image. So, a gunning splint looks like this. So, it uh, typically looks uh, some uh, orthodontic appliance, uh, right? So let's see what it is. So a gunning splint was initially presented by Thomas Brain Gunning for the immobilization of edentulous or partially edentulous jaw segments after reduction. So this is used when there is a fracture in the mandible. It is also used on maxilla also, but most commonly it is used on a fractured mandible so when we need immobilization to be done in a fracture mandible of edentulous or partially edentulous after reduction okay so so for edentulous patients the treatment planning poses great difficulties due to reduction and fixation of the fractured atrophic mandible because it is atrophied already right the uh, problem is that the uh, the bone content which is there in this edentulous mandible is so very less that it is really very difficult to uh, maintain that immobile state so that the fracture gets healed so due to edentulism guide, guidelines provided by occluding teeth for reduction and fixation of fracture are absent okay so that is the main reason it is difficult okay so open reduction of fracture site is not helpful due to compromised medical condition of the patient at older age so mostly edentulism occurs in older age so open reduction is not helpful due to the medical conditions people have in that age the denture bearing area of the edentulous mandible most is more easily fractured and has less possibility of rapid and uneventful healing so for such condition closed reduction and fixation of fractured segment with gunning splint type of is preferred over open reduction technique so it holds together the fractured segments of the mandibular bone and mobilizes the immobilizes the jaws in occlusion okay so this is the gunning splint so this is how the appliance looks okay so it consists of a mono block okay mono block resembling two bite blocks joined together so so these are the two bites so here you can appreciate so these splints take form of a modified dentures with bite block placed in the posterior region and a space in the incisal area which facilitate feeding of the patient so immobilization is carried out by attaching the upper splint to maxilla by per alveolar wiring and lower splint to the mandibular body by circumferential wires so these are the wirings that we use so you can appreciate that here upper splint is immobilized by per alveolar wiring and lower splint to the mandibular body by circumferential wires so intermaxillary splinting can be done by connecting two splints with wire loops or elastic band so here here it is the two splints are connected with wire loops or the elastic bands okay so fabrication so let's see so these are the impressions of the edentulous mandible and a maxilla so impression of the fractured mandible and uh, is made with irreversible hydrocolloid impression material while for that of maxillary arch it is made with medium fusing impression compound okay so irreversible so alginate impression is taken and this is made with a primary impression technique okay so it is immediately poured in dental stone to obtain the cast so these are the cast that is obtained so you can appreciate a crack here so as we know the fractured mandible is fractured okay but in the cast we do not get like this so what we'll do for this crack to appear the mandibular cast is altered into two parts exactly the same way as the fractured fracture is in the patient's mouth okay we do that by our hands okay so on this altered cast what we do the bases are fabricated and occlusal rims are made because that then only we will able to make the patient occlude properly right so approximate jaw relation is made by clinical judgment and then occlusal rims are altered okay 
then so after the occlusal rims are altered tensor base is poured occlusal rims are made in occlusion and a central thing is put for feeding so one anterior made opening is made in the rims for feeding purpose and posteriorly interlocking mechanism is provided to avoid any movement between the two splints so you can see it is very much interlocked so the splints are made in heat cured acrylic resin then the arch bar is incorporated on buccal side of each splint with the help of self cured acrylic resin so an arch bar is present is made on the buccal side okay buccal side here here on the resin with the self cured resin these arch bars were used for intermaxillary fixation of the splints okay so after placing the arch bars it looks like this so we have uh, unwaxed it demounted okay everything is done so the splints are checked in the patient's mouth for extension and frenum relief we check these in the patient's mouth then finishing and polishing is carried out and disinfected in glutaraldehyde solution okay so the fixation so as you can see the splints are being fixed into the mandible and maxilla of the patient here okay so after fixation it looks like this in the mouth and it looks like this on an opg okay so here you can see the uh, uh, appreciate this uh, arch bar right right and there is fixation here okay and there is fixation into the maxillary also there is fixed okay so the central maxillary fixation you can appreciate here more this uh, fibrous bands and all right so the advantages advantages are it does not require any surgical exposure of fracture site is not required can be used in both dentulous and edentulous patients so this is important okay in edentulous cases even the previous uh, dentures can also be used as splints to stabilize the fractured segments if the fracture line is present in the denture bearing area so if the fracture line is present in the denture bearing area previous uh, dentures can also be used there is no need of making new dentures so it is minimally invasive technique right and coming to the disadvantages disadvantages are inadequately secured splints if circumandibular wires are placed too close to the fracture site so inadequately secured if the circumandibular wires circumandibular wires are used in the mandible right to fix the mandible so if they are placed too close to the fracture site there is inadequately secured splints then contraindicated in unfavorably displaced fractures so contraindicated in unfavorably displaced fractures then this is important okay the splints may become foul if proper oral hygiene is not maintained so proper oral hygiene is required for the patient then coming to a clinical scenario so a 62 year old patient suffered injuries to his lower half of the face that suggests mandibular fracture on examination so a patient is a geriatric patient okay lower half of the face suggests mandibular fracture on examination the most appropriate manner of management of patient when there are no teeth edentulous patient so an edentulous patient the most appropriate will be as we have seen it is gunning splint okay so if you like our video do subscribe to our youtube channel you can also follow us on our instagram at dogshala for dental content and at dogshala medical for medical content you can also find us on telegram thank you